Uh, hello participants, uh, please note that we are waiting for more participants to join this webinar. Till that time, I'm sharing our social media platform links, our communities link and our official website link. So guys, go and uh, follow our communities and website.
Okay, let's start this webinar. Uh, good morning and welcome you all in this age and 900 session. Myself, Archie Dissel, I'm a host for this session. Guys, if you have any question and queries, please put question on chat box. We will be there to help you out. Moving ahead and talking about our event sponsor that is Synergetics. So Synergetics is an India one of kind co-porting learning solution company. Now you will get a question like who we are and what we're doing. So answering your question, we boost to our offering and also give comprehensive advisory service to clients who wish to modernize their framework. We educate, advise, implement and manage. Then the solution Synergetics offering that is Persona based onboarding solution, onboarding add on solution, certification solution, certification add on solution, reskilling solution, emerging technology training solution, certification hackathon solution, cloud adoption solution, latest technology training solution, sales pre sales training solution, practice playbook, and art architecting solution. Then what does Microsoft certification does? It will give you complete learning experience. You will get trained to build uh, appear for the exam and get certified. Uh, this is skilling learning. Here you can advance yourself. First, you have to complete fundamental certification. Then you can go with the advanced role based certification, then expert level certification. Uh, in fundamental certification, we are providing you five types of certification that is ASA 900, AI 900, DP 900, PL 900, and SC 900. In associate level certification, we are providing you many types of certification. Here you can see on my screen. Providing you AZ305, SC100, PL600 and AZ400. Guys, also we have special certification that is AZ120, AZ140 and AZ220. I already, if you want any paid certification, you can connect with, connect with us. I already shared contact details on chat box. Uh, so certification will help you to increase your visibility, expand your knowledge and skills. Also, we do provide certification add-on, onboarding add-on like short duration modules and more. Then moving ahead, today training is organized and handled by ATC community. So our ATC community is open to all the people who are interested in our cloud technology and various emerging technology. Under ATC community, we have emerging technology community for all. Then Azure Tech community for Punekers. Emerging technology community for Suratkars. Azure Tech community for Nagpur. Guys, you just have to install the Meetup app and you can follow our communities there. Then you have to follow code of conduct, which will create a respectful environment for all the participants. Please note that participants are not allowed to take screenshot of the presentation and cannot do screen recording. We will try to upload this training on our official YouTube channel. Today's speaker for this training is Prinka Sarode. She has 12 year experience in our learning consultancy and project training and five years of experience in research work. Currently work with Synergetics as a cloud and Java consultant. Agenda for this webinar, you will get to know more about the topic and benefit of it. Yes, in one day webinar, we are providing you full day workshop. Then coming with the self learning plan, we are providing you complementary learning achievement badge. You just have to follow the step and you will get the activity badge. Then mentoring and exam prep session. If you have any question, you can submit a question on our feedback form. Then knowledge assessment by before the end of this session, we are providing you assessment link. You just have to give your exam and test your knowledge. Then we are providing you AZ900 complementary learning achievement badge. Here you can see the follow. Here you can see the step. You just have to follow the step and you will get the activated badge. Make sure guys you follow us on our LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter and YouTube for upcoming webinars, update and information. Thank you. Now I would like to hand over this mic. Our speaker, she will continue ahead. Yeah, thank you, Aji. Good morning, everyone. I hope I'm audible to all of you. Yes, ma'am, audible. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for the confirmation, guys. Okay. 
So guys, we'll start with the introduction part first. Okay. As uh, Archie already give the introduction about the synergetics and all. Okay. About the certification. I just want to give you the uh, short introduction for the uh, certification level. Okay. Just give you the path. Okay. And then we'll start with the what is the scenario before the cloud? What is the cloud computing? Okay. So how this AZ900 cert, uh, certification, okay. This is the Microsoft fundamental certification, how it is divided into three main modules. Okay. And with these three main modules, we have to cover the uh, all the topics from all the modules. Okay. So let me share my screen first and then we'll start with the things. Okay. I hope it is visible to all of you. So please confirm. Open the chat in the. Yeah, thank you. So instead of getting a full screen because my uh, chat window is getting open in the site. OK, so that's why I'm not getting it into the complete because I'm not continuing with the PPT. I'm making the notes. OK, but for the introduction part, I'll just stick with that PPT. OK, uh, <clears throat> OK, so we'll start with the uh, Microsoft Azure Fundamentals introduction. OK. Uh, as all of you know, I am Dr. Priyanka Sarode. I am a Java and cloud consultant in <clears throat> synergetics. I have total 12 plus years of experience as already uh, this introduction part is getting uh, done by the Archie. OK, but I will uh, definitely uh, understanding from your side as well. What kind of the uh, company that you are in? OK, uh, what is your designation? What kind of the experience that you have along with the Azure? OK, and what you are actually expecting from this course? OK, so uh, just put your name or uh, if you are in the company, if you are a student, no issues with that. Just put all the details in the chat box. OK, so that I'll get the understanding from your side. OK, that kind of the what you are actually expecting from this course. OK, so I'll really appreciate if you put your kind of the thing into the chat box. Yeah. Yes, Pascal, uh, if you mention your experience in Azure or in cloud, if you are uh, aware about AWS, if you are aware about GCP, if you are aware about Azure basics, uh, if you are having the higher knowledge, that is again OK, no issues with that. So just put that kind of the experience in the chat box as well. OK, so that will get to the no to each other. OK, so it's better for me and it's better for us to getting the understanding. OK. <clears throat> so what about this course? This course is all about uh, to get the complete knowledge, core knowledge, OK, uh, about the cloud computing. OK, uh, what is the core architectural components over there? OK, along with that, what is the main role of governance? How we manage the Azure part? OK, what are the different kind of the services? OK, <clears throat> can we move the on premises data into the Azure? So what kind of the things that we have to come up into the mind? Because see, most of the students are uh, or most of the participants basically are having the understanding for what they are having the understanding for the on premises uh, infrastructure, but they didn't understand the uh, idea about the. Uh, what we say the cloud. OK, how those services, what are the different types of the services over there? What are the different types of the models? What are the different types of the clouds? OK, can we use those kind of the clouds? What is the how the networking part is going to be played a very vital role? OK. <clears throat> yeah. So uh, we'll take that part. OK, so we'll uh, I'll cover the complete core detailed knowledge. 
okay uh, we, at the basic level so that you will get the understanding about the complete core details about the azure fundamentals okay so as per the day wise obviously it's a one day uh, session so i'll cover uh, three modules okay uh, so i'll start with the uh, describing the cloud concepts then uh, uh, proceeding it with the uh, azure architecture and services what are the different management uh, azure management is going to be there and governance part is also going to be there so i'll cover these three modules okay uh, in today's session so i'll definitely show you how many different modules that we have in this uh, for this certification so uh, for this certification you have to understand that uh, what are the different cloud concepts okay as per the weightages here they mention okay uh, if you will go with the learn path of the microsoft then you will get the more understanding of this as well uh, and i i'll definitely cover that percentage wise uh, concepts over here as well so that you can directly if you prepare for the certification so definitely it will help you and for the i must say 90% it will help you but here 10% you have to do more practice for the uh, mock type of the solving mock type of the questions and understanding the uh, terminologies okay in a better way so that it will help you to solve the uh, the mock test of the uh, az900 okay and uh, definitely you will get the certification for this so there are three modules over here in az900 that is microsoft azure fundamentals uh, first one is the cloud concepts second is azure architectural components and services third is azure management and governance so as per their weightages here they mention the weightages because they these are the three modules but inside those modules okay there are so many different different small concepts that you have to get the understanding of this okay uh, <clears throat> so there are if you go and just check the certification path okay so here is the certification path okay uh, that is learn.microsoft.com slash certification i'll definitely show you on the browser as well okay so if I open this browser, so simply put AZ900, okay, and the very first link that you will get it uh, from the search, okay. So this is going to be your certification details, okay, what level that you have, okay, and how you prepare for the exam. Okay, uh, how you practice it, and if you go and just check it, so see there are the three main modules over here. Okay, and this is the complete details, all the modules that are uh, complete with the complete description. Okay, we'll discuss those points uh, on the notes basis so that you will get the more understanding of this. So that you, whenever the session is getting over, just go through it once and you will get the better understanding of it. OK, so this is the way that uh, you are getting this self learning for this particular course. OK, and if you want to get the exam, so if you have to click on the tech exam, so here you can get the buttons OK, and you can schedule it as well. <clears throat> Just a minute. Okay, so yeah, along with that, uh, if you have the achievement batches and all those things, you can get make sure you have the Microsoft account over there. Okay, and uh, then you will get the So uh, if you have the Microsoft account, if you don't have no issues with that, you can create that account. OK, and uh, then you will get the uh, that particular ID over there. And along with that, you can check your achievements. You can check your uh, profile over there. You can add whatever the number of the uh, certificates that uh, certificates that you are going to be applied for. OK, 
so <clears throat> this is all about the introduction part okay so now i'll start with the core concepts i'll make a note of all these points over here okay so whatever that i covered as per the modules okay sometimes i am uh, using uh, this kind of the diagrams sometimes i'll be just making the notes okay because some part is going to be a theoretical some part is going to be a if theory is not required then we'll discuss it those points with the help of diagrams i'll mostly use the uh, diagrams over there concept visuals okay so i'll start with the first module okay that is describe cloud concepts okay so what is the scenario before cloud what is the scenario before cloud see we are having the organizations we are having the physical servers we are having the uh, space to keep those servers because on this is we called it as on premise infrastructure okay so whenever we are talking about this kind of the on premises that is my organization okay if i become a part of that organization so previously whenever <clears throat> uh what we say a uh, cloud part is not going to be there it is just in the progress okay so at that time every organization have their own networks their own physical servers their database servers number of the machines over there okay so this is we called it as what this is we called it as an organization or we must call it as a on premise infrastructure now obviously at that in you know, our organization whenever we are talking about this organization this is the scenario before the cloud okay so this organization is getting accessible uh, with the help of their website okay whenever we want to go and search for the organization like capgemini like lti okay so there are so many number of the companies there are having their own organization correct so now they are, they require to use some of the services from the cloud instead of <clears throat> instead of investing all this parts okay now why they required why we need the cloud computing okay and what is the cloud computing is basically all about so this organization is responsible for creating the number of the websites applications databases okay and whenever we are talking about this scenario before the cloud so this organization required what first they required servers then obviously the required space keep these servers then to communicate within the organization obviously network is required and obviously at that time here they required the fiber optic cables okay so that faster communication is going to be there <clears throat> now along with that whenever we are talking about servers okay so servers need to be available 24 by 7 okay so like amazon whenever we are talking about this kind of the shopping sites or uh, the num there are the number of the organizations which are which are basically 
giving you this kind of the applications ready but they didn't get you know about their down times okay it means whenever that server is not getting available obviously those particular sites are not getting easily accessible to us but whenever we are getting the time okay and if you go and check that app amazon app mintra app there are so many applications over there apps over there and you if you go and just checked it you didn't feel any kind of the downtime basically whenever we are talking about whenever the sell is going to be happen okay so just like whenever we are having uh, 26 january 15th august mostly they are having the sale okay just like whenever having the uh, summer sale okay winter sale or any kind of the sale whenever is getting happen those servers are all always going to be on so how they keep the maintenance of those servers okay are the servers are readily easily available okay and if they are uh, available okay so these servers need to be available by Twenty-four by seven, correct. Now, whenever these servers are twenty-four by seven available, obviously heat is getting generated. Now, for that purpose, we have to install the cooling units. Correct. Okay. So for that. we required acs along with that whenever these servers need to be available by 24 by 7 power is going to be again very very important part that is we call it as a electricity okay it means whenever that power electricity cooling you needs are always on then those servers are actually available to us 24 by 7 to sorry to that particular organization and organization apps are going to be available to us whenever we are going to be accessed it okay along with that obviously these kind of the things are going to be there so we need a team okay for what to manage these servers okay so manage is means uh, basically means what uh, whatever the updations are going to be happen whatever the maintenance that we have to take care of okay so for that purpose we need a team so organization hire a team okay to manage these servers so make sure these servers are going to be available by 24 by 7 along with that if acs are going going to be failed the team is going to be there managing those cooling units managing the power supply okay make sure these servers are getting available and this organization designing the apps okay so that we can use those apps and we didn't feel any kind of the downtime that amazon is getting down at some particular time okay what is this all about this is we called it as a capex okay capex that is capital expenditure okay and this is we called it as the cost which is going to be incurred in setting up the physical infrastructure so the cost incurred in setting up physical infrastructure okay so this is basically a scenario whenever the cloud part is not going to be there but the term always there that is capital expenditure and the other term is that operational expenditure okay so the capex is what 
capex is going to be whenever we are talking about on premises or the organization we require server make sure space is going to be there okay land will be required okay and obviously nowadays land is going to be a very costly networking is going to be there uh, to get the communication happen in between the organization okay then after that servers uh, to make sure that servers are available by uh, available by 24 by 7 so the power is going to be really required and make sure the team is going to be take care to manage this servers okay so the for the maintenance part for the firmware part we required these kind of the things and this is we called a for each and every part what we required money okay and that particular whatever the these servers are uh, these are the database servers okay physical servers and make sure these servers we have to pay for this okay and this is the cost which is we called it as a capex that is capital expenditure the cost which is incurred in setting up physical infrastructure now what is opex so i'll come on that point okay so now whenever we are having the electric electricity for the server so make sure we are getting the electric bill electricity bill okay so monthly we are pay for this kind of the electricity so the bill is going to be generated so we have to pay the electricity bill okay whenever we are having the very heavy traffic okay at that time obviously uh, whatever the traffic that we have whether it's a heavy whether it's a low make sure servers are always available okay and for that kind of the maintenance power is needed and for that particular power we have to pay the electricity bill okay now whatever the team that we require to manage the servers okay so we have to pay the salary to the team okay Now sometimes uh some of the servers are not getting uh some of the servers are getting failed okay so we have to replace it we have to take uh, make sure that new servers are available as per their uh, capacity okay so if we add more servers if we are replacing those servers okay so we have to buy those servers okay so this is we called it as a replace or buy new servers okay so this is what this is the operational cost okay and why we required for the maintenance of physical infrastructure okay so operational opex operational expenditure is what the cost incurred to maintain the physical infrastructure okay so this is what we call it as a capex and opex okay so i'll come back to this particular points this is this basically scenario whenever the we are talking about the organization now can i remove this particular things okay can i use the existing services which is given by okay the different cloud providers okay so first of all we have to understand that what is cloud computing okay 
so we are having the number of the services over the internet if we require those kind of the services like compute because see here we are having the machines we are having the servers okay we are having the storage units all these things are there but then why we need this kind of the cloud computing part so first of all we have to understand what is cloud computing so here there are the three main services that is compute networking and storage okay so these are the three important services which we require okay and to make different types of the applications okay so that they can communicate with each other if they require the database part storage is going to be there okay so this kind of the services delivery of this kind of the computing services over the internet so that it enables the faster innovation okay we'll get the flexibility of the resources and along with that make sure economy of the scale is going to be very very affected okay so what is cloud computing cloud computing is the delivery of computing services over the internet okay so instead of keeping those servers instead of paying the bill and all whatever the service that we required we had to pay only for those services we use that service okay pay for that particular service whenever i am getting done with the service i'll close this close the service obviously i didn't pay for more than that okay so economy of the scale is going to be affected resources are flexibly available we are not worrying about okay the infrastructure because cloud providers give the complete environment to you it means now that complete physical infrastructure is going to be given by the different types of the cloud providers okay if you are aware about the cloud providers i'll repeat that there are so many cloud providers available but the boom is microsoft then microsoft it means azure and then uh, gcp google okay cloud uh, google cloud provider okay that is gcp and after that aws amazon web services okay so there are the three microsoft google and amazon these are going to be a very very uh, what we say having the boom in the cloud environment okay <clears throat> now when we are talking about the microsoft that is azure okay so can we get this kind of the services with the help of azure so yes whenever we want to create the machines okay whenever we want to getting those machines and getting the communication is getting happened from the on premise network to the uh, cloud network or between the cloud network that is again possible can we use the database part in the cloud yes it is possible with the help of storage okay so this is these are the important services but make sure all these computing services whenever these deliveries are getting happen over the internet this is we called it as a cloud computing okay i hope uh, the part is clear to yes compute what do you mean by compute so whenever we are talking about the memory part okay whenever we are talking about the hard disk whenever we are talking about the operating systems okay so we are basically having those kind of the services over here okay so we are not worrying about 
okay we can choose what kind of the service that we want like virtual machine like we want to design a one particular machine exact same machine that we have in our uh, laptop whatever the configurations that we have in our laptop can we get that machine like linux like uh, ubuntu like uh, can we create the uh, windows okay so these are the different types of the machines now whenever we are creating the machines obviously what what we require hard disk okay memory along with that there are the different types of the compute services it means can we create the machine for the gaming purpose can we create the machine only for testing purpose only for development and production purpose is it possible can we create the number of the machines at a time can we create only one machine at a time if my machine is getting failed how can i uh, get the another same machine available okay all this part is going to be a comes under the compute networking storage these are the basically three important services and with the help of these three important services you can done the number of the services over there okay so these are the very important and inside those we are obviously now exploring those kind of the services over there okay so i hope this point is clear to all of you any questions okay now i'll uh, explain you and talk you about this shared responsibility model i hope this part is going to be heard somewhere okay so what is shared responsibility model so here are the main important thing is that we are the customers what we have to take care of when we are designing and using those services okay in the cloud so we are the customers what kind of the uh, understanding that we have okay and what kind of the responsibilities that we have to uh, play okay and along with that there is a cloud provider and in our case it's a microsoft okay so i'll share one diagram with all of you that is for the shared responsibility model okay i hope my screen is visible to all of you so this is shared responsibility model so see some of the services okay i uh, i'll definitely tell you about as pass and saas but i just want to mention you there are the responsibilities where customer plays a very important role where cloud provider is going to be played a very important role and some of the services is going to be shared okay by the both okay so what are these responsibility we are not talking about this right now we are just talking about this on premises okay if i am talking about the on premises everything okay everything we have to take care by the customer okay so what are this responsibility physical data center physical data center like there are so many number of the machines and we have to put those machines in a one particular room that is we called it as a logical containers okay so that is we called it as a data center so data center networks physical everything is going to be a physical physical data center physical network physical host 
operating system, networking, applications, your identity in the infrastructure, okay, whatever the accounts and identities, obviously amongst you and the other people are there. So these are the number of the accounts and identities you have to maintain. If you want to connect uh, with your mobile or from your PC, you have to take care of those devices are going to be registered over there. So take care of that responsibility as well. And obviously what kind of the information and data that you want to create and what you want to share in between the on premise. OK, so this is where the customer is take care of all this kind of the responsibilities. Now, can we share those responsibility? Is it possible? Because we are talking about cloud computing. Microsoft is a cloud provider. It, it gives me this kind of the services where I can do the compute, where I can do the um, networking, where I can do the what? The third one is storage. OK, so storage is for all the data. OK, networking is for all the uh, networking controls. And what about the compute? That is your data center, your network, host, operating system, all this. OK, so can I use those services? So yes, can I now can I share those responsibilities with the Microsoft? So can Microsoft take care? of that particular responsibility so that I am not, I'm just creating a only simple virtual machine over there. Is it possible? OK, so yes, it is possible. OK, so Microsoft gives you this kind of the opportunity. OK, so this is going to be a what is going to be a Microsoft Azure. OK, so this is a cloud service provider. OK, and it gives you OK the opportunity to use those services and now you are not going to be a part of all the responsibility. OK, so. Then you will get the. Uh, so, sorry, then you will get the understanding what kind of the services that you want to create. OK, so I'll definitely cover that part. Okay. What is ours, pass and SAS, but before that, First of all, we had to understand. What is? How these services are going to be used on the. Microsoft. OK. So Microsoft gives you the pay as you model pay as you go. OK, that is we called it as a consumption based model, like for example, electricity, whatever the uh, you, whatever the products that you are using, electrical project uh, products that you are using, only you have to pay for those kind of the uh, products where you are actually using the electricity. Correct. So electricity is one of the uh, good what we say the example that is your consumption based. How much you consume only uh, consume that only you have to pay for this. OK, it means that. Uh, In electricity part, whenever my electricity is getting on, OK, whenever I am having the one tube light, one fan in my room, I have to pay only for that. Whatever the laptop charges, whatever the the complete units that we are getting over there and we have to pay for this only. OK, once I switch off the electricity, obviously we didn't pay. The same thing is going to be applied over here. OK. So what is that? <clears throat> like your postpaid as, as well, whatever the services that your Airtel. OK, uh, that network provider is given to you to your mobiles. OK, so you are just used for the calling. That's it. So you have to pay for only for that particular calling charges. OK, if you are using the Internet. OK, prepaid and postpaid is there. Postpaid is basically a kind of consumption based prepaid. It means going to be a, again a part of your OPEX that you are giving the. 1 GB data per day, how much data that you use? No issues with that, but here I'm talking about consumption based. So postpaid is going to be a called it as a consumption based model. OK, so here that is consumption. 
based model. That is, we call it as a pay as you go. OK, so in the same, whatever the services that you require on the cloud, OK, Microsoft gives uh, you those kind of the services, but you make sure only for those services you have to pay for this. OK, so it is going to be a better and Microsoft gives you the number of the calculators as well. We'll discuss that part in the last because it's going to be a pricing calculator. It's a total cost of uh, ownership as well. OK, so that TCO pricing calculator definitely will discuss that part. But yes, for virtual machine, for storage accounts, for networking, how much units that you have to pay, how much dollars, how much rupees that you have to pay. OK, if you used a one part, if you create a one virtual machine, OK, and how much amount that you need to pay? Because see, whenever we are creating the virtual machine, OK, <clears throat> we required hard disk, we required uh, uh, disk over there, we required the networking part over there because to getting connect over the Internet, we required uh, <clears throat> other than what they whatever the number of the machines that we have one two three how many number of the machines that you have for a single machine obviously we require those kind of the uh, parts okay and for those particular parts whenever we are actually using that virtual machine okay so whenever my machine is getting started we have to pay for this if, if i use my virtual machine for one hour i'll pay for one hour that is we called it as a consumption based model. OK, so cloud service provider operates on a consumption based model, which means that end users only pay for the resources that they use. OK, so we'll discuss about the resources part as well. Pay for the. Resources. That users are used. OK. Now. What are the different types of the clouds that we have? Everyone is aware about. types of clouds mostly heard private public and hybrid okay what do you mean by private cloud so see whenever we are having an organization it creates its own cloud environment okay and make sure they are in their own data center they are using their own data centers so organizations are responsible for operating the, uh, these particular services whatever they provide to the uh, to their employees okay so they does not need to provide the access to the users who is outside the organization basically okay it means uh, there are lots of companies okay there are uh, so many organizations they have their own private cloud. They are purchasing their cloud part and make sure only those uh, uh, only those employees who, which is going to be a part of that organization. They use that cloud. OK, outside the organization, uh, obviously that cloud part is not getting accessible. So uh, this is we called it as what that is we called it as a private cloud because that cloud is going to be purchased by the organization. Correct. So it is we called it as a. Organization. Yes, VPN kind of the thing, correct. So organization create. A cloud environment. This is we call it as a. Private cloud like VPN. Virtual private network. OK, this is where we are using basically what 
there are so many number of the machines okay on your let me share you yeah okay so these are the number of the machines now here suppose i if i have one diagram with me definitely i'll share that diagram <coughs> No issues. Whatever the services that cloud gives me. Okay. Suppose I am having one virtual machine. Office 365. Okay. Now from this machine, from the on-premises machine, I want to get connect with this cloud environment. Okay. Where I'll put the my virtual machine. I'm having Office 365. I'm having Outlook. Every everything. Okay. Over here. Dynamic 365. Okay. And now I want to getting connected with over here. Now we can't directly connect it with over here. Now for that purpose here we required the. VPN. OK, so with the help of VPN. A user. With its own laptop, it is from on premises machine. OK, that communication is getting possible. OK, but make sure whenever this is going to be a. Owned by the organization, this environment is owned by the organization. OK, see virtual private network is going to be a different concept but with the help of this yes we can going to be connected with over the cloud but if that cloud is going to be purchased by the on premises then with the help of vpn we can connect okay and along with that if i want to use those kind of the services over there this cloud is basically called it as a private cloud because this cloud is basically owned by this organization okay now if i go with the public cloud if i go with the public cloud what do you mean by public cloud the public cloud OK, so here there are so many different types of the. Services available applications available like Microsoft 365. OK. This is Office 365 Microsoft 365. OK, you have to register yourself. You are there is no need. You are you have to be a part of your organization. Whatever the user. Who is outside the organization? who is not going to be a part of the organization, can they directly use the uh, applications from this cloud? Like Gmail is going to be there because Google gives you the Gmail. OK, so you are using the Gmail accounts. OK, Outlook. OK, there are so many different types of the applications which are you are using it, but you didn't pay for this. This is we called it as what a public. This is what we mentioned. We required the internet. OK, we didn't require any VPN to get the connect over there on the public cloud. OK, so that is we called it as a public cloud. OK, whatever the applications. OK, available or uh, the cloud. Uh, sorry, uh, the cloud which is going to be owned by the number of the cloud services and they are 
hosted hosting the provider basically hosting provider okay so there are the number of the resources and services to the multiple organizations as well okay so from on premises you can get then use a public cloud uh, outside the organization people can use a public cloud no issues with that but for the private cloud make sure you have to be a part of the organization okay so for the public cloud it is going to be accessed via network but for the uh, private cloud make sure you required some kind of like vpn over there okay like express route okay so there are so many different different things but this is going to be a part of networking we'll discuss that part okay but here we are discussing what are the three different types of the clouds that we have private cloud and public cloud what do you mean by the hybrid cloud now see there are some uh, services like on premises or uh, there are the some organization who didn't want their all the services are going to be available on the cloud they required some of the services they are uh, hosting on the public some of the services they are keep it as a private some services are publicly available some services are privately available okay now at that kind of the scenario when some services are part to be a public some services going to be a part of private okay now at that time here we have to use a hybrid cloud okay so it's a combination of public and private cloud which allows applications to run in a most appropriate location okay so we must say whenever we are having this okay and this is we called it as a what this is we called it as a hybrid cloud so public cloud some of the services from a public cloud plus some of the services from the i'll put the some of the services in the private cloud so combination of this is we called it as a what hybrid cloud okay any questions yes ritesh i'll coming on that particular point as well any questions on this particular part so i hope this part is going to be clear to all of you what is public cloud okay and if we are talking about the public cloud i will have one question yes yes what do you mean by hybrid cloud right so hybrid cloud some of the services okay if we required more flexibility like i just want to keep all uh, some of the services publicly available okay so that outside the uh, organization people are going to be access those services like their gmail accounts their outlook accounts okay so uh, whenever we are having this kind of the services which are publicly available which we call it as a public cloud we are putting those services in the public cloud but some of the services which are basically a part of private like i i just want to connect with my database server okay i just want to get communicate uh use those uh database only for the web applications okay so at that time what kind of the services that we required i'll put those services in the cloud storage accounts in the cloud but 
that storage is not going to be accessible by the outside people okay so uh, which is going to be accessible by the on premises network or those particular users correct so these are the combinations okay so some of the services which are put in in the public and combination of the private services whenever we are talking about this combinational part okay whenever we are putting a combining the public and the private cloud okay this is we called it as a hybrid cloud okay now if i'll go with the public cloud can really we required any expenditure for using this gmail account yes correct so think yeah so whenever we are talking about this public cloud it means no a capital expenditure to scale up but whenever we are talking about private cloud capex is there i hope capex part is clear to all of you if we are talking about private cloud whatever the services that we have inside the private cloud okay so for that purpose obviously we required some of the hardware okay because we want to use those services only private services okay so private cloud hardware must be purchased for startup and maintenance okay organizations have complete control over the resources and the security and along with that organization itself responsible for hardware maintenance and all the updates correct so this is we called it as a private cloud and what do you mean by the hybrid cloud i'll repeat myself it provide give it provides the most flexibility okay organizations determined where to run their applications organizations control security part compliance part or legal requirements obviously we have to legally mention all this kind of the thing then only we have to use it it's a combination with the public cloud because i have to give the rules these are my services which i didn't want to put and i didn't want to uh, give the access to the other people uh, outside the organization okay for that purpose we are putting those services inside the hybrid uh, private cloud okay and that's why organization control the security because it's a combination of both public and private that's why okay so legal requirement is going to be needed along with that security okay so that part is going to be taken care by the organization okay so i hope this cloud models that we have that is public private and hybrid is going to be clear to all of you along with that capex opex and consumption based model also going to be clear to all of you <coughs> thanks for the confirmation now what are the different benefits if we are going with this the very first thing is that high availability after that 
scalability. Then, predictability, security, governance, monitoring, okay, manageability. <clears throat> So these are the different benefits. Let's talk about these benefits. Whenever we are talking about benefits, high availability. I'll create a one virtual machine and it is highly available to us. How? So there are the different types of the concepts. Okay, like availability zone. We'll discuss that point. Availability set. Virtual machine scale set. Okay. Now, high availability means what? Make sure whenever we are creating the resources in the cloud, all these resources are highly available. It means whatever the disaster is getting uh, happened, okay? Whether it's a natural calamity, okay, whether it's a power failure, whether it's a uh, my machine is going under the maintenance, see Microsoft defines that particular maintenance. It's point it Microsoft is very clear about that. Microsoft is going uh, going that particular kind of the thing. There are the number of the <clears throat> uh, SLS over there and they mention all this particular part over there that whenever we are having the resources, all the resources are going to be updated. All the resources are going to be under the maintenance for a one particular time. But whenever those particular resources are under the maintenance, if the power failure is going to be happen, if any particular uh, region is going to be failed, because see, these are the number of the resources, okay? We are talking about virtual machine storage account, the number of the resources that we have. How, how we mention it is going to be highly available to us. Okay, so for that, we can make the maximum three copies of it. How it is going to be created. Okay, so I'll definitely show you about that particular regional part. What is region? What is where your data center is actually? Okay, and uh, how many number of the different servers, okay, that uh, cloud is going to be take care of, okay. So first of all, we will understand the as, pass, and SAS. Then you will get the more understanding of this. But these are the very important terms like availability zone, availability set, and virtual machine scale set. With the help of this, okay, there are uh, some other terms as well. But with the help of these terms, okay. Make sure my virtual machine is highly available to us. Okay, so whenever that Amazon application is having. Okay, high traffic. I am talking about the another that is high. Uh, high availability. Now I am coming to the point scalability. What do you mean by scalability? See, I have a machine. Okay, uh, my way back is going to be running on that machine. And whenever I have inquiry, whenever the traffic is going to be very, very heavy on that one particular machine, can I scale it? OK, so in the organization, we have to do it manually. And once the traffic is going to be heavy, we have to uh, make sure buy new servers over there. OK, make sure those applications are going to be highly available. But after that, OK, whenever the season is getting over, my servers are still there and we have to pay for these servers, which is we called it as a very expensive. Whenever we are talking about. On premises or the organization or uh, scaling whenever we are doing it manually. 
now how the cloud is going to be give this kind of the benefit to me i am having one machine where my operating system is there where my disk is going to be there where my memory part is going to be there everything is going to be different and my machine is going to be ready traffic is going to be loaded okay so here there are two types of the scalability okay first is vertical scaling okay and second is horizontal scaling so what do you mean by vertical scaling see i have uh, one company okay and uh, where me and my friend is going to be a part of it my friend is going to be a uh, uh, handling all the digital uh marketing part whatever the comes whatever the digital inquiry whatever the inquiries are getting coming okay so he is responsible to handle those things so i just have one particular person with me i have to pay only for that one person but whatever the traffic is coming i am marketing my things in such a way so that my i am getting lots of inquiry okay in one particular month whenever i am getting the discount to the participants correct so at that time what happened i am getting lots of inquiry and my particular friend is going to be a really having very hectic job he is responsible for handling all the inquiries okay sometime he get the inquiries like no way and he is not able to answer those questions or those inquiries okay now why because he is just a graduate person okay now i'll give him the time whenever my sale is not there i'll give him the time i'll make him do the mba degree okay it means what scaling up okay just scale his knowledge only one person is still there he is scaling his knowledge okay he'll do the mba degree and he'll get that degree and now he'll come back and now he'll handle all the things in a very well manner whenever the sale is going to be happen what do you mean by that from the graduation he'll do the post graduation he'll get the doctorate all these things it means what only configurations just like my machine previously my machine is going to be a very simple configuration okay now i know see during those particular period whenever the sale is going to be happen my machine is really getting exhausted so I, what what i'll do i'll increase the size of sorry increase the size of machine this is we called it as a what single machine is there but i just increase the configuration that is we called it as a vertical scaling it means only one machine is take care of all the responsibilities only one person is handling all the inquiries now what do you mean by horizontal scaling instead of applying only one particular candidate okay i'll make okay here one graduate person along with me now i'll hire what 10 person okay and make sure 10 graduated person but when during the sale time only whenever the sale is not there i'll come back to the one person so what i did during the sale time instead of investing in one person and making him with the higher degree i'll hire just 10 graduated person handling all the inquiries done with the sale remove these people and 
again come back with the one. That's it. It means I will just having the same person. OK, but with the list. That is we called it as over here uh, whenever we are having the understanding for the machine. One machine is there. OK, and now I'll making the. Same copies. Same configuration machine with the same com configuration. One machine is there. One graduate person is there. OK, I'll make the 10 graduated person. I'll hire the 10 graduate persons. Now here I'll make the instances of those machines in the same way. Like one machine with the same configuration. If I will go and distribute the inquiries on the 10 machines, that is again OK. No issues with that. But it is going to be a dynamically happen. Whenever the sale is coming, my instances is getting doubled. My instances is getting five times. Increase my instances is getting 10 times increase. My machines same machine that handles the inquiries whenever the traffic is very heavy and whenever the traffic is getting off. Obviously, I'll come back and delete those instances. Come back to the one machine. I'm happy with that. This is we called it as a horizontal scaling. And it gives you this kind of the scaling facility. Uh, sorry, this kind of the scaling facility. OK, with the cloud. This is we called it as a scalability. OK. Then. Predictability. So here. Azure gives you the pricing calculator. OK, and you can easily identify the different types of the virtual machines, different types of the if you go with the networking, if you go with the storage, it will give you and give you the estimated price that if you go with this kind of the uh, operating system, hard disk, everything. OK, so you can easily predict the price over there for whatever the resource that you need that you uh, used or create on the cloud. OK, that is we called it as a predictability. Security. See, whenever I discuss this point, uh, whenever this virtual machine is there, whenever uh, we are having the uh, what we say <clears throat> storage account, they have their own securities by default. But instead of that, if we'll go with the multi-factor authentic uh, authentication, Microsoft Enter ID, there are so many number of the different security layers. OK, and we have to cross these layers. This is we called it as a. Microsoft Defender. OK, or Defend. Uh, yeah, Defender. Microsoft Defender service. OK, and with the help of this Defender services, Definitely whenever we create that virtual machine, I'll definitely show you. OK, so with the help of this defender defense in depth, basically defense in depth. So there are basically a layers. I'll show you those layers and then we'll understand the security is also going to be a beneficial. OK. Then governance. Identities are going to be identity provider is a one of the main service given by the cloud that is Microsoft Enter ID. We'll discuss that point whenever the governance is coming. And if you are identity, if you are authenticated person and only for authentication is not done. If you are authorized for that particular resource, then only that particular resource is going to be created. That is we called it as a part of governance. So this is again one of the benefit. OK, can we manage this different number of the services in number of the. My particular group, so yes. Here Azure provides the subscription inside those subscription. You have to understand the hierarchy. OK, we'll come that part in the hierarchy. Make sure whatever the management group is going to be there inside that. We can having the six layers of management groups. After that, they'll give the subscription. Without subscription, you can't create the resources. So 
management group is going to be a first layer then second subscription then after that resource group then after that resources i'll come and discuss that point and in this way you have to manage all the resources inside the azure okay so this is we called it as a different benefits given by the cloud any questions in that particular part guys yes in case of vertical scaling the services available on the machine or resource will be stopped during the scaling or those will still be running during the vertical scaling see that is the beauty of the uh, what we say the cloud whatever the services are there which is going to be running on to your virtual machine and if you still increasing that particular size of the machine okay so it is working in behind but your virtual machine is going to be scaling up first of all you have to make sure those particular services so those particular services over there is going to be a stop and then do the vertical scaling that is going to be a very good understanding of uh, handling the things but whenever we are talking about it's a dynamically happened okay so at that time this vertical scaling didn't stop the services it is dynamically happened okay and it is going to be just change the configuration but still your applications are still is in the good state okay they can't affect okay any any other questions okay so now i'll come to the last part of this module okay so that is what are the different cloud services are there that is we called it as a as that is infrastructure as a service yes dynamically it happened platform as a service and last but not the least that is software as a service okay so these are the three important services of the cloud as pass and saas and whenever we are talking about this infrastructure as a service so whatever the servers and storages that we required what are the networking we required whether we have to give the firewall and security over there okay like we are using the nsg okay uh, so these are all the different types of the securities okay we are not worrying all this kind of the thing whenever we are talking about infrastructure as a service along with that data center that is we called it as a physical unit or physical plant or building that we didn't take care of okay so what do you mean by this infrastructure as a service whenever we are not worrying about whatever the server and storages that we required net about uh, not worrying about the networking part about the security part not worrying about the data center part where my machine is going to be created i am not worrying about that okay this is we called it as a infrastructure as a service so infrastructure means what we required servers we required network we required a one particular building or one particular unit physical unit physical thing that where we are actually creating the machine but i just want one particular machine that's it whatever the part that server part that data center part 
okay that physical plant okay that networking plant their cooling part everything is going to be taken care by the provider cloud provider whenever customer is not responsible for that part this is we called it as a infrastructure as a service okay i'll come back to that particular shared responsibility model again that is us okay that is infrastructure as a service i am not worrying about data center where my machine is going to be created physically no i am not worrying how networking part is going to be there internally what kind of the wiring is going to be happen no i am not worrying about it responsibility taken up by the cloud provider so i will share that responsibility and transfer that responsibility to whom to the cloud provider to the microsoft now microsoft gives me this kind of the thing like like physical host networking data center everything is going to be given up by the cloud provider that is we called it as a infrastructure as a service it means i am not worrying about these things yeah now i am worrying about what operating system networking control okay applications what kind of the applications that we required what kind of the identities accounts that we have on those particular machines can we access it can we have the servers over there web servers over there can i access those virtual machines or uh, those services uh, from my devices is it possible from my pc uh, is the rdp getting open is the port is getting open over there so that whatever the applications that i created over here can i access it over the internet is it possible okay so this is we called it as a i am just worrying about this part okay but i am not worrying about where my machine is getting created what kind of the wiring that has been done for the networking no i am not worrying and what kind of the physical host okay where we are actually hosting my machine no i am not worrying about that okay so this part is taken care by the cloud provider this is we called it as a infrastructure as a service and the very best example is that your virtual machine virtual machine is a as service that is infrastructure as a service because whenever we are creating the virtual machine we are not selecting the data center network host we are selecting the operating system networking part we are designing the applications okay everything is over there that that's why vm is going to be your infrastructure as a service okay now what do you mean by the platform as a service now as per the shared responsibility model over the top if i have those figures with me so see if i am talking about the pass okay so it means that now i am not worrying about the operating system as well whatever the development tools database management business analytics no i am not worrying about that i am just creating one my web application that's it everything is ready environment is completely ready my machine is automatically getting ready operating system is automatically getting installed it is automatically deployed on the data center no issues with that it means cute food is there i just want to eat that's it okay so this is we called it as a platform as a service it means my platform is basically ready i just want to design one my application and host it that's it okay so whatever the environment for building purpose for testing purpose for deploying the software application so i am not focusing on managing the infrastructure i am just worrying about the coding part that's it so if i am just write down the code everything is ready in front of me i have to just write my code and host it that's it this is we called it as a platform as a service okay now if you go and just check it over here see now virtual machine is also ready 
some of the networking control in my hand because if I want to get in connect with the database, OK, so obviously at that time some of the. Control is getting by the customer. Some of the control is getting by the Microsoft. So security is basically providing by the Microsoft and customer is going to be just use that network for the connectivity purpose. OK, so that control is going to be shared between cloud provider and the customer. Whatever the applications that you are going to be created. OK, so the customer creating that application and host it on the network. OK, so Microsoft take care of that. Make sure whenever we are having the directory and identity infrastructure. So in the past, like uh, you are. Uh, what we say the web app app services. OK, so this is we call it as a app services is what whenever you are creating the web applications web applications. It means. Azure gives you the, the simple just tick 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 and your application is getting ready. That's it. You are not worrying about everything. Only just write the code selecting the what kind of the language that you required. OK, whether it's a whatever the uh, web application that you want. It's a Java based. It's a Python based. It's a um, dot net based. Select that language. Say give the name. OK, create a one service plan. That's it. And your app is ready. Web app is ready. That's it. Connect it with the back end and you are getting the data from the database as well. That's it. It's a very easy thing. Over here. OK, so this is we called it as a what? Pass service that is platform as a service. Now what do you mean by software as a service? Software as a service. Like everything you are not worrying about. OK, like your email calendars, OK, your Microsoft Office 365 users just going to connect to that particular cloud cloud based applications over the Internet. Make sure they have their own identities. Whatever the devices they used only just make sure they have to take care of that. What kind of the data that they, they want to uh, use it in the email, use it in the uh, messaging. OK, that is all about take care by the customer. But the other part, OK, other part is going to be taken care by the Microsoft. OK, this is we called it as a software as a service. OK, so see. Where your applications are getting hosted, what kind of the database? See, you are using Gmail, you are using uh, Office 365. Where you are actually storing the data. Did you check that? No, we are not actually worrying about that kind of the thing. OK, so all the things and how it is going to be stored in everything is going to be taken care by the Microsoft itself. So that's why this is we called it as a software as a service. OK. So here in uh, AZ 900 some questions are getting asked uh, in the mock. OK. Uh, like for this kind of the ask pass and SaaS service. OK, so where customer plays a uh, vital role, OK, and uh, which service is going to be a uh, mostly dependent on the customer instead of on premises. They are talking about SaaS pass and us. OK, so uh, make sure just go through the document and then you will get the more understanding of this. OK, so I hope this is going to be clear to all of you. What is us pass and SaaS? If I'll go with the as the most flexible cloud service. If I'll go with the pass, OK, this is uh, we called it as a focusing mostly on the application development part. And if we'll go with the SaaS, we have to just pay as you go principal uh, pricing model over there. So users pay for the software they use uh, on a subscription model. Uh, platform management is going to be handled by the cloud provider. In the past and obviously whenever I'm talking about this, you configure and manage the hardware for your own application. That's it. OK. So. 
This is all about the module one. We discussed all the uh, cloud concepts over here. Okay. We'll take a break for 10 minutes, then we'll start with the module two. I hope. Yes, Office 365, yes. Okay, guys, any questions? Okay, so we'll take a break. I'll put the timer over here. Okay, so we'll start in next 15 minutes. Yes, Jaikesh, uh, am I audible to all of you? I hope my voice is coming. Yeah, I'll uh, hi Vishal, I'll definitely uh, convey your message with my team, okay? And they'll get back to you. If you have any queries, you can WhatsApp to us. No issues with that. OK, so I'll just put down the timer over here. I'll be back in. Fifteen minutes we will start at 12 with the module two. OK. Uh, hello guys, I shared complimentary learning achievement badge on chat box. So guys, please uh, redeem your badge and after redeeming after redeeming your badge, put done here on chat box so I can see who are done with the badge.
Hello, everyone. I hope all of you are back. And I'm audible to all of you. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for the confirmation, guys. So we'll start with the next module. That is module two. Azure architectural components and services. OK, so let me share my screen once again. I hope my screen is visible to all of you. <coughs> yeah. Thank you. OK, so we'll start with the. Azure architectural components. What are the different components? over there. So first of all, we had to understand the region. Subscription. OK, along with the region. Here I'll mention the availability zone. OK. Subscription and. Resource groups. OK. Data center is going to be there in the region as well itself. OK. I'll keep it like this. Region data center availability zone, then subscription and resource group. OK, after that we have to discuss the compute and networking part as well. OK, so first of all we have to understand. <coughs> What is the region? OK, what is the region pair? Then uh, what is sovereign region? Availability zone, data centers, resources, resource groups. OK, uh, subscription. What do you mean by subscription? What do you mean by management group? OK, so everything is going to be there. Now we have to start with the region first. What is region? So guys, Azure offers. Over all the globe, OK, more uh, global regions than any other cloud provider. So there are total 60 plus regions representing over 140 countries. Basically, region is what the region is your geographical area and it is going to be made up of one or more data centers. Uh, which is going to be closed in proximity. I'll show you how, where is your region? What do you mean by data center? I'll show you. Then you will get the more understanding of it. OK, so let me open my <coughs> browser. A minute, I just put it down. Okay, why it is not getting me? That's better. So, in the search bar, just write data center Microsoft Azure. Okay, and here is this site. So this is we called it as a basically a VR that is virtual reality. I'll share that link in the chat box as well. 
so that all of you are also getting it over here so see over all the glow okay you are getting this kind of the different different dots over there so what are these dots okay what do you mean by this blue light blue dot okay so you will get the more understanding of all these dots from this particular column that is legend okay so if you will go and get it like uh, <clears throat> this kind of the symbol which is we called it as a geographies region is going to be determined by this symbol networking okay now for the networking where my entry is going to be happen for the network on this particular region that is we call this as a network network pop okay so for the delhi for the <coughs> central india so there are so many different regions in india okay so we'll see that particular part uh, along with that age zone links okay uh, if you go and just check the ground station what are the different how we sustain this project okay so sustainability is going to be there so where uh, microsoft use the solar wind mixed okay so it's a carbon neutral right now but i must say in 2050 it's going to be a carbon negative so microsoft is aiming for this and let me check for the yeah this is india and in india we are having this two main regions central india region and south india region so if you go and click on this you will get this kind of the central india details it is a region with availability zone and location is in pune okay for more details i think on my screen it is not getting over there but here in the year it's a Thing to twenty fifteen over there, okay. And for the other details, how many different availability zones are there? So everything is going to be mentioned over here, okay. So just like that in India, see this is going to be a geography of India. So that is India, okay. And if you go and just check, this is going to be a central India, okay. and uh, the another one is going to be a south india it's in the chennai and i think the third is going to be uh, in the on the way or it, it is not going to be still launched but yes it is coming soon in the hyderabad okay so these are the different regions and if you go and just check for this particular central india entrance for the delhi side for the north india okay we are having this network pop if you go and just check this is for the sorry nagpur okay if for the delhi this is going to be new delhi for the bombay okay so these are all the network pops if you go and just check okay so these are the different regions and i must say the region is going to be a <clears throat> you will get the more understanding from this kind of the thing now if you go and just take a tour if you have the time and just go and just check for the data center okay and the azure space so if you go and just check for the data center how where actually your machine is going to be created so again it's going to be a 3d model that in the vr it is just showing you the complete infrastructure okay so here okay you have to enter the lobby so if you go and just check it so there are the number of various points and if you go and check the navigation so this is the renewable energy carbon usage recycling everything is going to be mentioned over there and if you enter the lobby okay here actually you are what the data center is present and if you go and just enter it so you'll get the complete view where actually your servers are located so this is going to be a very very nice thing okay designed by the microsoft so go and explore it you will get the more and more understanding of this i hope 
the region is going to be a geographical area where actually the availability zones are going to be mentioned okay so this kind of the thing is there and it will start with the i must say yeah from the lobby okay so if you just go and just move the things you will get the complete details about the server room so see there are the cooling units servers everything is going to be there if you go and explore more and more you will get the more understanding of this inbuilt in infrastructure given by the microsoft azure okay so now i'll come back to this point yeah definitely tell you about this this is a presence of point where actually your networking is getting and it's just the entrance gate for your network that's it okay for the uh, different types of the resources that you use on the cloud so make sure region is going to be there if you are creating the one particular machine it is located in the data center correct so that point to entry to that particular virtual machine okay so basically this azure is maintaining this pops over there where your gate is getting open for the networking and then you will get the networking happen in between the virtual machines okay so this is we called it as a presence of point that is pop network pop okay so there are total 60 plus regions i have already mentioned and showing you on the globe as well okay then after that <clears throat> what do you mean by the region pair what do you mean by the region pair so see for each and every region okay it is getting paired with the another region why it is going to be happen and why that kind of the uh, thing is going to be mentioned so see some suppose natural calamity is getting happen at a one particular region okay suppose flood is going to be there now at that time the complete com complete data center complete system is going to be getting off okay complete whole infrastructure is getting off then how i can make sure my another uh, same uh, machine is going to be available to me again it is a point of high availability now for that purpose basically we are using a one particular uh, every region is getting to be paired with the another region but make sure at least 300 miles of separation in between the region <coughs> as like dr means what dr can you just uh, elaborate it dr then i'll uh, explain it with you okay so region pair it means at least 300 miles of separation in between the region pairs so that automatic replication for some of the services is going to be available to you <clears throat> not all some of the services so make sure whenever you are talking about high availability those services are available to you if any disaster is going to be happen okay so for that region pair so like uh, <clears throat> south india central india is going to be a region pair uh, in the same way uh, that south india uh, we are having the india central but there is another south india central that is again going to be a which is open in a hyderabad so for the same again central india is going to be a region it is going to be located at the 300 miles of separation in between this region okay so we have to prioritize region recovery uh, in the one particular event when the disaster yeah, yeah uh, okay uh, you are talking if a disaster recovery is going to be there so for that purpose basically we are using this regional pairs so if any disaster is going to be happen how we recovered it okay how we getting my services back in the same manner now for that purpose we are uh, make sure these region pairs are going to be there okay and whatever the updates are going to be happen sequentially 
with the minimum with the minimal downtime as the same updates are happened in the another region as well okay so that is going to be a very very important and yes it is going to be used for the disaster recovery okay what is sovereign region what is sovereign region you see us govern these are the us government regions okay and uh, they keep their services uh, within uh, used for their that particular region only so uh, it meets the security whatever the compliance needs of the us okay uh, whatever the uh, different number of the federal agencies uh, there are the some uh, state and local governments over there so what whatever the different number of the uh, security related issues okay it's going to be maintained by those uh, services us government services within the sovereign region okay so make sure this is going to be a part of azure government okay separate instances of the azure it is a separate instance of azure it is physically low, uh, isolated it, uh, obviously and one more thing is that it's a isolated region as well okay so it is physically isolated from non us government okay and uh, make sure whenever we want to access those services we have to be a part of this particular uh, government then only it is going to be accessible to us but obviously it is not possible so those people who are going to be who are going to be a part of those particular uh, us government services okay Uh, so these services us government so these services are only accessible by those people okay so this is we called it as a sovereign region just like a china as well okay so there are the some uh, more so sovereign region like china as well china is also maintaining those particular region for uh, their own government uh, services okay <clears throat> now what is the main feature of the azure china Okay, so Microsoft is the China's first uh, foreign public cloud service provider. Okay, and uh, the uh, very important question is always coming for this uh, Azure China feature. Is this physically separated instance of Azure cloud service, but it is operated via twenty one via net. Okay, so that again, please remember, uh, for the China, it is going to be operated via. Twenty one via net. So this is this network is uh, networking facility is going to be used by the China. Okay, for to accessing those services. Okay, over the uh, Azure China. Okay, and all data stays within the China. So to ensure that their compliance is going to be met. Okay, so this is we called it as a Azure sovereign region. Okay, data center. it's a physical location where your actual machine is going to be created okay so that part is going to be a very very clear to all of you okay so it's a location physical location okay uh, we, uh in the uh, azure infrastructure and where your actual virtual machine is getting deployed okay then after that availability zone how my machine is highly available to me now i'll keep uh, again create a one simple diagram to all of you okay so this is your azure region now over here we are having maximum 3 availability zones so please make sure whenever we are talking about availability zone there are 3 availability zones over there
okay so this is your azure region this is your availability zone 1 i'll make a note of this that is az1 that is your az2 this is your az3 okay now if i'll create a virtual machine and i put that virtual machine in the availability zone okay so these availability zones are connected with each other so that it will give you or provide the protection against the downtime whenever the data center is going to be failed now see virtual machine is going to be there but sorry before that here your data center is going to be there inside that data center your virtual machine is getting put now make sure these are going to be connected in such a way okay so these zones are connected in such a way suppose suppose ah huh? okay let me okay sorry so i didn't use it over here of pain let me check is my pain is available i'll keep this kind of the lines now suppose this data center is getting failed what happened can i get that more uh, same machine is it possible to get that same machine no so for that purpose availability zone gives you the guarantee that if one data center is getting failed your same machine make sure you are put that virtual machine in the availability zone okay and make sure this same okay is going to be available in the availability zone 2 and the same machine is put it in the availability zone 3 now if my one data center is getting failed still i am getting the details okay i'll get the traffic divert it into this virtual machine and i'll get the response from this virtual machine if this is also getting failed another machine is still getting ready okay so this is we called it as a what 
physically separate the data center within the same region and if each data center is equipped with independent power of independent power independent uh, cooling and networking and if because of that power failure because of that network failure my machine is not available i'll get the data from the another same identical machine that is we make the redundancy over here okay so all this is going to be all these zones this is what we called it as a connectivity okay that is done by the private fiber optic networks and it is going to be a give you the very fast communication is getting happened okay that's why here fiber optic cables are getting over there within this availability zones okay so what do you mean by availability zone so availability zone gives you or provides you the protection against the downtime whenever a single data center is getting failed okay that your data center failure is going to be happen and your machine is getting off so at that time you will get the data from the another availability zone so at least three copies are getting happen whenever we are talking about more than one copy then only it is going to be applicable so only for one machine if you are talking about one machine no it is not possible so make sure that machine is going to be a part of availability zone then only this is going to be done okay yes availability zones are in the same region not in the region pair okay so in the region pair the same is going to be copied okay so make sure it is going to be in the same region okay so we'll already explore the globe okay <laughs> no az1 az2 availability zone 1 availability zone 2 availability zone 3 three zones are going to be created your machines are getting deployed in different different zones one same machine where vm1 is in the az1 vm1 is in the az2 vm1 is in the az3 suppose az1 uh, uh, availability zone 1 and that data center okay Uh, your machine is in the data center and that data center is in the az1 and suppose that data center is getting failed the same copy is going to be maintained in the az2 and you will get the response from the az2 that is within the same uh, sorry from the same virtual machine but the different data center okay no there is a network uh, networking is getting done in between az1 az2 and az3 with the uh, fiber optic cable okay and with the help of this networking which which is going to be a backbone of the <coughs> microsoft azure and microsoft azure is going to be take care of that part that about the communication okay and then the communication is getting happened okay in india it is central india and south india yes there are right now there are only two third is going to be a coming soon which is in hyderabad okay yeah i am coming to that point whenever we are talking about availability set yes availability set is going to be another option for the high availability and whenever we are talking about this availability set definitely i'll show you the uh, diagram over here let me check if i have that diagram with me instead of okay so see this is going to be we called it as a uh, availability set 
what do you mean by availability set so basically highly availability it means i am having only one machine now make sure how this is going to be possible and making the three copies of this virtual machines okay so it is not going to be applicable for the single virtual machine make sure you have to uh, use the more than one virtual machine then the only this is this redundancy is basically talking about whenever we are having multiple copies correct to maintain those multiple copies that's why here availability zone is come into the picture that's why my high availability is going to be achieved if there is a downtime is there is a disaster we'll still recover that data it is possible but make sure multiple copies of that particular resource is going to be there now we are talking about virtual machines now whenever we are talking about virtual machines so uh, first of all i'll create the region uh, see, sorry i'll select the region i'll uh, put my virtual machine in the east us region now make sure uh, i have to uh, there is a data center in this particular region and i'll keep that instead of availability zone i'll keep that machine in the availability set so availability set is a combination of two things that is fault domain and updated domain what do you mean by fault domain whenever physical failure is going to be there what do you mean by physical failure the like you are uh, you are having the power you are having the network you are having the uh, cooling things over there which is going to be a just like a racks okay you are putting your machine in the racks so in the data center there are number of the racks and in the rack somewhere your machine is going to be created correct now in that rack suppose that complete rack is getting failed that is we called it as a fault domain power supply is not there net because of the network something is getting happen and your rack is not uh working that is we called it as a rack okay and your machine is in the rack and because of that physical failure your machine is not available to you that is we called it as a fault domain okay and what do you mean by update domain so see microsoft having two two types of maintenance one is planned maintenance second is unplanned maintenance okay planned maintenance means what like whatever the uh software updation is going to be there whatever the uh, if my machine is going to be a uh, generating very heat okay ac units are there we have to stop it okay may I take a rest of it and then we have to update the things increase the power and whatever it is cool down the things this is going to be we called it as a planned maintenance what do you mean by unplanned maintenance sometimes we are getting the power failure sometimes we are getting the network failure sometimes my cooling units are getting automatically off this is what we called it as a unplanned maintenance so unplanned maintenance means fault domain that is your physical failure and what do you mean by planned maintenance that is planned already planned that is update domain correct so here the blue lines horizontal horizontal uh, patches okay considered to be as your update domains so maximum 20 update domains are there and maximum 3 fault domains are there okay so see by using the single fault domain it is going to be a meaningless because you are using only single rack and if you are putting your machine in the single rack and that rack is going to be under the power failure what happened we are not getting the replication of that particular machine so it is going to be a really meaningless so instead of that you can put the more than one rack that is you have to create the whenever you are creating the availability set you are creating the three for at least three fault domains or two one is really meaningless so three fault domains are there and here i'll create instead of uh three update domains okay so how this availability set is going to be working your first virtual machine is putting in fault domain 0 and update domain 0 name okay naming is going to be assigned starts with the 0 so that is your first fault domain and first update domain second machine okay is going to be under the second update domain and second fault domain third is going to be a third update domain and third fault domain now i'll create the another virtual machine 
okay that is the fourth which is situated in over here because this is going to be occupied okay so now fault domain 2 is going to be there and uh, sorry fault domain 2 is going to be there and update domain 1 is going to be there so in this way these machines are going to be allocated in this space okay now if this rack is getting failed and this update domain is getting failed if some it means my this machine is getting under the maintenance still i am getting this machine from the another fault domain from the rack 2 or from the rack 3 okay so how i distribute the traffic over here so instead of distribute the traffic on to this particular machine by using the load balancer i distribute the traffic over here on these machines i'll get the response from these machines okay so this is the way that your availability set is going to be working it means my one machine is getting failed it still another it still your response is going to be getting answered okay and your inquiry is getting answered by using the load balancer your traffic is distributed on those machines correct so that's why we have to put the machine either in the availability zone or either in the availability set vmss is completely different we are actually scaling out the things okay so instances are getting scaled that is we called it as a vmss virtual machine scale set okay so we'll discuss that point later but i hope this availability set part is going to be clear to all of you <clears throat> no see availability set is different availability zone is different either you have to put your machine in the availability zone if you are not putting in the zone then you have to put is uh, sorry you have to put your machine in the availability set so either you have to explicitly create that availability set then you will put the machine in that okay so zone is different set is different and vmss is different all three things are different but with the help of three we can achieve the high availability okay So now I'll move towards the resources. What are the different resources that we have? <clears throat> Azure resources. VM. Virtual network. That is we called it as a VNet as well. storage account app services uh, is my screen is visible now guys i hope my screen is visible to all of you uh, deepak can you please check it at your end yeah yeah thank you thank you for the confirmation <coughs> Okay, so these are the different resources like SQL database is also there, functions, Azure function is also there. Okay, so there are so many Azure service resources. Okay, so I'll show you on the portal right now. If I go and open the portal. <clears throat> so portal is one of the tool. Azure portal is one of the tool. Okay. For that, you required your Microsoft account. Okay. Along with that, you required to create those resources. The subscription is going to be a very played a very important role. I'll come to that particular point. Okay. And if you go and just take portal.azure.com with your uh, login ID, if you have that subscription with you, okay, uh, there is a, a free subscription as well. Okay, if you, uh, I think right now it's going to be a very, very uh, important thing because they are really, uh, what we say, giving you the $200. If you are a student and if you want to use this free 
kind of the subscription over there given by the Microsoft. So at that time you had to fill the form. You had to make sure your uh, credentials are going to be very correct. And then only Microsoft gives you the two hundred dollar uh, for thirty days. Okay, and you will use those two hundred dollars to create number of the resources on the Microsoft Azure. Okay, and uh, how you create those resources for that here? There is a portal dot azure dot com. So this is the one of the uh, site where you are actually creating the resources with the help of GUI. Okay, the another one is there are the number of the tools as well. Either you have to go with the PowerShell, either you have to go with the Azure CLI command line interface. Okay, so this is going to be there. So if you go and check Power uh, Portal itself gives you the uh, Cloud Shell. So basically it means whatever the commands that you are using for the PowerShell. Instead of installing all the PowerShell and that software, Portal gives you this kind of the thing. OK, and once you logged in, your credential is reflected over here. And along with that, I will definitely tell you what is that AZ 900 and all. OK, so this is uh, what we called it as our tenant directory. OK, so I am right now inside this particular directory. And what are the resources that we have in Azure? OK, so if you go and check for the all resources. OK, and uh, Right now we I, I I have already created those resources over here, so that's why I'll listing out this. But by default, if you go and just check it. So there is a drop down menu over here. If it is not there, it is not there. You can use this search bar as well. So if you go and just check virtual machine is there. OK, then Kubernetes service virtual networks like storage account is also going to be there. OK, you can check like this storage account okay app service is also going to be there so there are so many different resources you can create like sql database cosmos db okay load balancer accounts virtual networks okay <clears throat> so these are all the different resources but make sure whenever you are using those resources and creating those resources using portal at that time you have to create a logical container for this. OK, so that you can put all these particular resources in a proper manner. OK, it's a logical container. That's why we called it as a resource group. OK, so. It's a resource group. Called it as RG. OK, it is a container where container to put the resources. Now make sure whenever you are creating the resource group, I will show you how you have to create. OK, so if it is not listed over here anywhere, so you have to use this search bar. Just type the resource group. OK, so the very first service I want to create the resource group. I have already this resource group in my different uh, subscriptions over there. OK, if I'll go and just want to create. OK, the new one I just want to click over here. I repeat myself. Go inside this search bar, type the resource group, select that. OK, then there is a one plus button create. You go and create it, named it. Just like I mentioned, it's a AZ 900. OK. I just named it as a training AZ 900 RG. Now over here, whenever I will create that resource group, explicitly I have to mention the region in which region I have to create this resource group. OK, so resource group is a container which holds related resource for an Azure solution. OK, one more thing here. If you select the region East US, it means whenever you are creating the resources in that resource group, region is automatically taken up. OK, and 
every resource having one resource group. OK, I will go with the East US because it's going to be a really cheaper. Whenever we are talking about this region, we have to pay as per the region. OK, so I'll go with this East US. But if you go and just checked it over here, there are so many number of the region available that I have shown on the globe as well. OK, like South India, West India. OK, Central India as well. If I go and just checked it and just typed it over here. Over here, Central India. OK, I'll go with the East US. OK, is really a really very cheaper as compared to all the other region. That's why I'll go with this. OK, then review and create. And just create that resource group. Now, whatever the resources that I'll create, OK, I'll put it in that resource group only. OK, so. This is my resource group training AZ 900 RG and right now no resources are there. OK. Again, come back to the. Resource group, so these are the number of the resources I'll create and put it in the resource group. OK. Now one more thing whenever I'll keep my resource group. I have to explicitly mention the region. Correct. Now if I will create the VM in West US, can I keep it in the resource group uh, where my region is East US? So yes, you can put it. In that resource group, no issues with that. You can put it no issues. I'll repeat myself. If I'll create a VM with West US and I want to put that VM in the resource group where resource group is having region East US. Is it possible? So yes, it is possible. No issues with that. OK, but because of the confliction, because of the understanding, most of the time users Whatever the region that you select for the resource group, they are creating their resources in the same resource group. With the same region. To avoid the confliction, that's it. OK. So this is about the resource group. Now I'll come back. To the subscription. What do you mean by subscription? So subscription is a billing boundary. OK. It provides you. And authenticated you gives you the authorized access to the. Azure accounts. OK, so first of all, give the billing boundary. So that as per the resources. Uh, bills are getting. Generated. OK, your invoices are getting generated. Along with that, uh, you can manage and control access to that particular resource. OK, whatever the user is having the provision within that specific subscription, then only. Those particular users getting the. Uh, uh, accessibility to use that VM to use that virtual network to use that storage. OK, so subscriptions are basically a what you are billing boundary. Now to use that subscription. First of all, you have to understand what type of the different Azure accounts that you have. OK, so. The very first is that Azure free account. If your organization purchase that. <coughs> passes and given to you. So. Obviously. 
it is going to be a subscription based you are using your pass okay and uh, uh, you are owner of the pass and then uh, at that time you can use those particular passes for creating the resources what do you mean by free account you can create the free account with the student okay you have to fill the form as per their rules and regulation once they are going to be verify you and then only you will get the credit of what 200 dollars okay so that is we called it as a azure free student account either you have to go for the microsoft learn sandbox this is again going to be a best option so by using the sandbox which is given by the microsoft learn path okay you can use that sandbox and you can create the resources but make sure whenever you are using that sandbox there are the exercises are going to be mentioned and only within that particular session okay within that, that particular uh, i think sandbox is available to you uh, once you are getting access to that sandbox it is available to you for the uh, next 6 to 7 hours over there okay but use that sandbox and once you are using that sandbox next day it is not available so make sure you have to use that sandbox intelligently okay so then with the help of sandbox also you can uh, create the number of the resources over there okay but for the sandbox make sure you have to understand the different types of this uh, tools like powershell you have to shift to the bash okay uh, you have to understanding about the uh, uh, whatever the different uh, gui tech like portal okay so that kind of the understanding that you have that commands that you have to be remember explicitly okay then sandbox is really really helpful to you okay so these are the different accounts with the help of these accounts obviously you have to make sure use and create the resources within the resource group now subscription is what subscription is a billing boundary so here i will definitely show you okay i'll come back to the home and when i click on my details over here okay so if you go and just check i am having one simple account i'll register myself for the microsoft with this particular account with your account also it is possible no issues with that okay and if you go and just check it inside the switch directory okay so i am having different different subscriptions okay i already have one pass right now okay so i'm using this pass as my subscription okay and if you go and just check for the primary directory as it's my uh, colleagues uh, directory and i am going to be a part of that directory as well so i can switch to that particular part and if i switch it i definitely show you how much amount is going to be remaining over here it reflects in the notification okay so see this much of the credit is remaining and this is going to be a visual studio enterprise subscription okay so see i am a part of now primary directory what is that this is we called it as a tenant tenant is what tenant is a dedicated instance okay of your microsoft entra id i'll come to that particular part later okay then you will get the more understanding of this but i'll just want to show you the subscription okay i'll come back to the az900 training <clears throat> okay and if you go there is a again one service that is subscription if you go over here you can get it over here or you had to search it or either you had to get it from over here so i'll just for your sake of understanding i'll 
use this subscription. This is one of the service. I have these two different passes. I'll go with the first one because this pass is basically I'm using right now. So if I go and just check it. OK. So this is my subscription name. OK, how I check the balance. So here is the link mentioned over there. What type of the currency over here? OK, it is a pass. And if I go and just check the balance. OK, so here you have to check your balance. What are the usage details that you have? But make sure your account is going to be a really played a very important role. OK, so I have to pick that one particular account. Which is going to be attached with my subscription. OK, so this much of USD is still remaining. OK, and. If I go and just check how many days it is going to be active, I'll use one USD 99 is still remaining. OK, so. In this way you can check your. Subscription. Cost. OK, how much data that you use, how much amount that you use everything. So this is we called it as a billing boundary. Now subscription whenever we are talking about this subscription, how this is getting attached to my account. So guys here again the hierarchy is going to be maintained. If I'll go with this. Diagram. OK, so there are the three layers over here. First is your management group. Second is your subscription. Then. Resource group, so this hierarchy is very, very important. Huh? And after that. Resources. So how you will get the bill basically? Here, this hierarchy is very, very important. So see. Management group, OK? Management groups can include multiple Azure subscriptions. OK, so here I'll just show you. It says my subscription. For HR department. Another is for my. IT department. Another subscription is for. Production department. OK, so management group is what management group is your organizational group. OK, your organization is registered for Azure and then. You have to purchase that particular subscription. OK, as per your organization, you have to make sure if uh, give the subscription to the HR department as per their. Uh, requirement, they'll create their own resource groups. 
okay they'll create their own resources correct so in this way basically the things are getting happened okay so management group subscription resource group resources a single management group or multiple management groups okay management groups having six layers in 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 management group we are having six layers we are having managerial then uh, sub managerial okay so there are six layer up to six layers you can man, div, uh, uh, you can divide that management group into six layers correct but whenever we are having this management groups with us each and every management group divide having one subscription or having multiple azure subscriptions if having multiple azure subscriptions so as per the department and as per their employees they create their own resource groups and they create their own resources okay so how many management groups can be supported by a single directory now i'll come to the point that is directory directory means what where actually you are subscription is getting attached okay so this is we called it as a azure active directory right now it is called it as a microsoft entra id so it is a one of the service which is we called it as a what identity provider okay i'll show you over here there is a one service that is microsoft entra id okay and previously it is called it as a azure active directory so see over here they mention azure active directory is now microsoft entra id okay i'll come to that particular point then you'll get the more and more understanding of this in the governance part okay but right now just understand this kind of the directory is there inside that directory we are having this particular license and when this particular license is there one tenant id is going to be there tenant is going to be a dedicated instance of that entra id and with the help of this id you can recognize that okay this is going to be your identity is going to be verified okay you can manage the tenant you can create the multiple tenants over here right now i am having this az900 okay and as, as i have already mentioned you about the primary directory so there are the number of the organizations okay so as per the organizations you can create the number of the tenants over here no worries about that okay but and you can create a tenant whenever you are creating the tenant i'll come to that particular part about the b2c and b2b but right now it is going to be a very very uh, we have to uh, follow those particular rules then only we can get and create the tenant right now it is not possible to easily create the tenant over here okay <clears throat> but previously it is possible okay so i'll create that if you go and just check i have this kind of the tenants over here their ids are different right now i am in this particular tenant that is az900 training and if you go and just check my subscription okay my subscription is going to be attached over here okay so what is my subscription state this is going to be mentioned over here okay so this is the tenant details and right now whatever the pass that i have i will attach that subscription with this tenant okay so tenant is a dedicated instance of microsoft entra id to keep the track of your identities and microsoft entra id is what if you go and just check it on the learn path you will get the complete details of this what is entra id okay so whenever we are having the identity identity provider service 
we are basically talking about Microsoft Enter ID. Okay, so over here, what is Microsoft Enter ID? Okay, it is a cloud based identity and access management service which enables your employees, okay, which access the external resources over there. Okay, so if you go and just check Microsoft 365 Azure portal, okay, all these are the SaaS applications. But before that, your ID, okay, identity is getting verified. Then only you will get the use those kind of the services. I'm just uh, checking for the diagram. OK, so see if you go and just checked it. So this is application user okay, who is a resource owner. And there are the resource server, but make sure. First of all, you had to log in, then. Server is going to be identify your. Auth oh, sorry, authenticate yourself first. Your authentication is going to be done then checking for the authorization and if authorization is going to be uh, taken up by you that is given the one complete access token or id token over there then you can access that particular uh, resource over here with the help of token so i'll definitely show you that particular part then you will get the more understanding of this okay So this is about architectural components, Azure architectural components. Any questions? Okay. Yeah, AZ 900 is a my tenant my organization name where i'll put the tenant getting attached okay my id is getting created and with the help of this tenant i have to attach my subscription okay so it is a basically a what my microsoft enter id that is azure active directory it gives me this tenant id now that is going to be attached subscription is getting attached to that particular i am my particular tenant is going to be a part of somewhere okay that is my management group my manage my, who is going to be responsible for giving me the subscription my company is responsible correct my company giving me the subscription i'll use that subscription how i have to become a part of that company then only it is getting verified then i'll use that subscription okay uh, i think deepak it's going to be a uh, problem at your side i think my screen is visible to all the other participants uh, guys anyone else other than deepak who is not getting my screen visible I hope my screen is visible to all of you. Yeah, except Deepak. Now on the tenant, we are having the subscription. Under subscription, we are having this tenant. No, on the tenant, we are having the subscription. You are talking about vice versa. <laughs> no. On the tenant, we are having the subscription. Tenant is a dedicated instance of your Microsoft Enter ID. Your identity is getting verified. Then only you will get the subscription. And inside the subscription, you can create the resource group. Inside the resource group, we are having the what? Resources. Okay. So that's why I'm drawing this kind of the figure. So over here, over complete over here, there is a tenant, one tenant ID, one tenant ID, which is a part of your. Once you are verified, 
you are authenticated and authorized for creating the resources then the hierarchy is starting with this okay okay now i'll come to the part compute and networking any questions guys about azure architectural components i hope this part is clear to all of you for the account yeah so when we create a free account for that we have to log in to the uh, azure we have to actually explicitly use that credit card okay attached with over there and then only you can use uh, your free account but make sure you have to enter your credit card details it's a compulsory <coughs> user id uh, we get user id and id no yes user id will be a part of your microsoft azure tenant it is firstly it is going to be verified it i'll show you that process then only you'll get the more understanding of this it is a part of governance then you will get the more one more understanding of this how we will create the user if you are uh, if uh, you are the user correct you are not a part of my tenant how i can call you as a part of my tenant so there are the different types of the things like you can act as a guest into my tenant you can member of my tenant but i have that ownership then only i can uh, call you as a part of my tenant as a member or as a guest okay so we'll discuss that point at the end because it's a going to be a th in, the, in the third module now under that if we have create a tenant yes uh, we did it right now it's not possible ritesh because there are uh, so many different scenarios is getting happened in the microsoft azure and that's why it is not allow you to create the this kind of the uh, <clears throat> creating the tenant see there are the two types of the things b2b and b2c business to business and business to consumer okay so whenever we are having social media platform with us we are having this kind of the ids can we attach it with the microsoft azure so yes we can attach it no issues with that we can create the tenant for this but it is not going to be a right now it is not going to be a yes yes it is not going to be a possible to create the tenant right now yes yes definitely you will you will get the more clarification when the third module is getting started okay we will discuss that point in the third module then you will get the more and more clarity yeah sure sure yes ritesh it is not possible to speak over there i think mic is getting off yes Uh, yeah i'm looking for the same thing i hope now it is allow you to speak i am unable did ritesh if you unmute yourself then
unmute yourself first because we are not getting your voice. Anyone uh, getting Ritesh voice? Is Ritesh is audible to all of you guys? I am not getting his voice. No. Not able to unmute. So then this is not in my hand. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, just post your question in the chat box. Okay, no issues with that. We'll discuss those points. Okay. And move to the next point that is compute and networking. Okay. Now, what do you mean by compute and networking? What are the different compute types? What are they whenever we are talking about container instances, virtual machines, functions? Okay, so whenever we are talking about VMs, okay, so whenever we are talking about VMs, VMs uh, means what actually we required the complete infrastructure. Okay, so these are the number of the services over there like whenever we are creating the vm size of the virtual machine which type of the virtual machine operating system okay uh, disk networking everything we have to mention explicitly so this is we called it as a compute service correct so compare compute different types of the services like vms there are the uh, container instances also Okay, uh, there are the different Azure virtual uh, Azure functions. Okay, uh, we are having availability sets. We are having VMSS. Okay, WebApp, VNet. Okay. So we'll discuss all these points in this module. Two second part is compute and networking. Okay, uh, along with the VNet, so VNet theory as well. So availability set I have already discussed, but tell you one more time. Okay. So what are the different app services? So Azure Compute is a on demand on de sorry on demand service that provides computing resources such as disk, processor, memory, networking, operating system. OK, so whenever we are creating these VMs. Processor, obviously it is very, very important. Disk, memory. OK. We have to define the operating systems. OK, so for the Azure Kubernetes as well. OK, so these are all the different types of the compute services. Now, how we'll create the virtual machine? So this is our first task. We'll see that task one. Right now. OK, create a VM, simple VM. And I'll just make sure this is the Windows Windows VM. OK, so I'll first of all, I'll start with this task. OK, where I have to include the virtual processor, memory, storage, networking. And this is my first as service that is infrastructure as a service. OK, so Azure virtual machines 
are software emulations? Yes, yes, definitely. I'll create the Linux VM as well. Okay, uh, for physical computers. Okay, so Windows and Linux as well. So I will go and inside the home. So please listen carefully. And go with the steps. So inside the home, if any services is not listing out over here, you have to give it in the search bar. But I have those resources. I want to create the virtual machine. So I have to select that service. Virtual machine. There is a one button that is create button. You have to click on that. And here you have to select the very first option that is Azure virtual machine. OK. So once you click on that button, the window is getting open with the all the different tabs. OK, basic disk networking management, monitoring, advanced tags, review and create. OK, so basics. It means in which resource group. That you want to put your virtual machine now starting with the subscription. OK, so if you go and just check this is going to be a, this subscription is not allow me, so I'll use this subscription. Then you had to use the resource group. OK. Uh, previously, I'll create already one resource group that is AZ 900 practice RG. If you want to create the resource group, then you can click on this create new button and named it over here. You can create at the time of creating virtual machine. No issues with that. OK, then. I'll give the virtual machine name. That is win VM one. OK, so I think it is going to be already there, so I'll give it as a. The VM one. OK, now can I select the another region? Yes, it is possible. No issues with that. OK, but I'll select this. And to avoid the confliction, I'll make the same. I'll choose the same region over here. Now, availability option is coming. OK, so for the instance details, we had to give the name of the virtual machine the region and instance details where I'll put the availability option. OK, so see there are the three availability options uh, uh, over here. First is availability zone that is physically separate your resources within an Azure region. What is virtual machine scale set? So distribute VMs across the zones and fault domains at the scale. It means your scaling part is come into the picture and this is we called it as a horizontal scaling. Dynamically it is getting uh, created the instance of the same machine. Then availability set automatically distributes your VMs across multiple fault domains. So see, I already mentioned it is automatically getting happened. OK, so if I will go with the no infrastructure redundancy required, it means once my VM is getting. Vanished, OK, once my VM is getting under the disaster or failure, I'm not getting the same virtual machine back. OK. So make sure you have to go with the availability zone. Now see if we'll go with the availability zone, you have to select that zone as well. Huh? So see by default, three zones are going to be there. If you go with the first zone. OK. So you are here. You are not getting the another. I'll just keep it like this. OK. And if I will go and create the two virtual machines, so again replica is going to be maintained. So I will go with the zone, two zones. So 
see two virtual machines will be created automatically okay if i will go with the zone 3 the same configuration type of the machines but three virtual machines within three different zones understood so you can put this kind of the zones over here i'll go with the simple zone 1 okay then security type i'll go with the basic level of security right now so see over here you can create the ubuntu server you can create the windows server you can create the linux and if you want to check more images okay so these are all the images present in present uh, in the marketplace and you can uh, take that particular image recent image and create that kind of the virtual machine okay so and one more thing if you want to create your own image so that is again going to be possible you can create your own type of the image over here and you can store it inside this my images you can get that kind of the thing as well but but for that obviously it is going to be a part of associate level so we are not going to discuss or discuss all this but yes this is again going to be a possible okay i'll go with this uh, windows server 22 2022 okay and i am go with the this then size yeah so see here you can check select what type of the processor that you required ram disk okay uh, along with that there are the some local uh, yeah. storages as well you can check this kind of the things premium standard basic okay and if you go and just check the size okay so there are the different sizes are also going to be there so what type of this sizes these are the general purpose if you just go like compute purpose okay if you go and just check for the all these are the general purpose okay this is memory optimizing okay if you go with the f type of the machine this is for the compute optimal okay if you go for the e type of the series that is these are the series eh? memory optimizing so check those kind of the different number of the series which is going to be used for the memory optimization compute optimization okay uh, then along for the gaming optimization okay so these are the different types of the series that we have and for the if we required the large number of the storage okay so we'll go with the l series okay if we just want to create the only uh, simple uh, test and development purpose we'll go with the basic okay so you can select that kind of the series and machine as per the type of your requirement i just required one cpu is enough two uh, gb ram is enough data disk is 320 okay no issues with that okay and uh, the cost is going to be a cheaper okay that is 850 per month and you can group by series and you can group by non series as well that is up to you okay so i'll just go with the b1 select it okay now the security part is coming that we have to provide the user name so i will keep it simple so that at the time of 
connection with that virtual machine and remember that password okay now inbound port so i have to make sure the gate is getting open so that i'll get the connection with the virtual machine and for that i'll open that rdp port open along with that http port at port is also getting open okay so that whatever the incoming traffic is going to be there it is going to be allow me to enter into that virtual machine okay i'm not going inside the licensing part okay so what i'll do subscription resource group then the instance details security details images select the image properly size that is again going to be very important part then account this is again of important part and inbound port rule so this is the basic information now i'll go with the disk so by default as per the image okay so this image default disk size is going to be taken but for the type instead of the premium i'll go with the standard okay either i have to go with the hdd or ssd okay that is hard disk drive okay so you have to select that particular type of the thing just a minute extremely sorry guys yeah so i'll go with this standard ssd okay uh, other parameters just keep as it is now i'll come to the networking part see i have to getting connect with the virtual machine so networking is going to be again a very very important part so by default i'll go with this and create the new virtual network i'll just named it as a vnet1 okay then i just named it over here as a subnet1 okay so logical grouping is going to be there so that i'll get the connect with my virtual machine so virtual network then subnet now make sure my virtual machine is available through the internet for that public ip is going to be there okay because public ip there are the two types of the ip public ip and private ip and uh, if private ip is there obviously that machine is going to be accessible within the organization that part you are aware of but whenever we are talking about the public ip whenever my machine is getting available over the internet okay so i'll go with this if you go and select the none that is again okay so here i'll just mention the win vm public ip okay whatever the skus uh, there i'll go with the same no changes i have done okay now whenever we are putting the guards over the internet okay at the time to connect getting the connected with the virtual machine okay virtual machine it means they at the time of networking when you are network interface card that is nick is going to be always there attached with your virtual machine but make sure to apply those guards whatever the uh, ports are getting open and whatever the ports are getting closed so that is in your control so for that purpose uh, just like applying the firewall security okay so to put that guards over here we have to use the nsg that is network security group so right now i'll create the virtual machine with the basic net uh, nic network security group i'll apply this network security group to the nic level or to the subnet level as well okay now public inbound port okay how many uh, ports that i'll open 
I'll open that is for the AT and RDP. Okay. So RDP for remote desktop protocol, HTTP. That I can access this virtual machine with the help of browser as well. Okay. One more thing that you have to tick over here. Whenever that virtual machine is getting deleted, make sure my public IP and my uh, NIC is also getting deleted because uh, for the public IP, we had to pay for this explicitly. Okay. Because we are using it over the internet. That's why. Uh, for the load balancer, I'm not interested right now. Uh, but for the other than that, right now, I'm just going on the tags. So tags are the uh, name value pairs. So you have to organize your resources in a categorized manner for the billing purpose. It is, it is going to be a very, very important. Uh, and you can logically uh, organize your resources basically okay, in the resource group. But whenever you are creating those particular resources, okay, at that time, make sure the tags are there so you can easily get the what type of the billing that you are going to be pay for. Okay, so I just put the tags and create that virtual machine in the with the help of tags environment and development purpose. Okay, just review and create. Once the validations are getting passed, okay, here. So see, you have to pay one rupees 0.1647 per hour. Okay, so create that virtual machine. So as per the size, as per the uh, processors, as per the disk size, okay, you have to pay and from your subscription, you are ha you have to pay as per the hours, hourly basis. You can by default that machine is getting started. Okay. So once the deployment is completed, you will get all the number of the resources over here along with the VM creation. You can get the complete resource creation over here. Okay. So if you go and just check it, it's listing out all the things for the win VM one. Your network interface card, your NSG, your public IP, your VNet, everything is getting created. Okay, so total 13 resources are getting created. Once it is getting created, we have to go inside that resource. Okay, so we have to wait for one minute. In between any questions, please feel free to ask. Not for all. See, public IP is chargeable. Okay. Whenever you are using it, make sure most of the uh, resources, most of the internal resources, we have to pay for this, like public IP. See, along with the VM, your private IP is also getting created. But we are, we didn't pay for the private IP. We had to pay for the public IP because it is going to be exposed over the internet. So we had to pay for this. Correct. So, yes, yes. Why? Because you are using a free tire. No issues with that. 